Hello, this is my review of the Commodore Amiga 4000. <laughs> This machine came after the Amiga 3000. It didn't have SCSI, but it had the new powerful AGA chipset. It came in three versions. Um, the 030 version, which is on the 68K Motorola, as well as the 040 version, and the cost-reduced version that came later on. The original price was around, let me look, $3,699, which was quite expensive. They were expensive machines. They were used a lot in industry, video editing, kind of. Um, I don't know if they were used in many office environments, but I know they were used a lot in the creative industry, such as the way Apple Macs are kind of used today in the creative industry. Um, this machine, it's around 21 years old. I'm 28, I used to play with it when I was like seven, eight or nine, and it's still going. Um, I've done a lot of changes to get it going today, but um, hopefully I'll keep it going for another 20 years. Let's have a closer look. So this CD-ROM didn't come standard with the Amiga 4000, but you could add lows on the front. So I've added a CD-ROM. Other people had five and a half inch floppies. Other people had zip drives. You could even add compact flashing nowadays. So it's really, really good to expand. And uh, it had a beautiful, nice 4000 keyboard here as well, which I really like. And a key lock, so you could lock it off so no one could play with the mouse or keyboard if you wanted. These are the joystick ports. They're quite annoying being on the left hand side because if you've got a short mouse, you have to kind of stretch it around the front or the back and it's, it's just not very neat if you're a right-handed user. Maybe it's good if you're a left-handed user, but this is the back. I've upgraded my power supply um, with a micro ATX. There's also your expansion slots at the side for Zorro. There's a expansion bay there, um, serial parallel ports, an extra floppy drive you could add on keyboard video and audio here now the keyboard was for the Amiga branded 4000 keyboards so it looks PS2 but it wouldn't work with any PC keyboards only the Amiga branded ones and uh, it's very strange that they did that now this is your daughter board with all the Zorro slots in there which was kind of like the Amiga's early version of PCI but you could customize it a lot more um, you could make custom hardware so stuff like the video toaster was a Zorro card and um, you can see the RAM in the corner as well I've got 16 meg of RAM and I've got the battery replacement as well um, which will stop leaking because a lot of the 4000 batteries just started leaking over time and corroding the board and that could be a disaster you know it's been put away for years and then suddenly it starts leaking and you have to get the whole board repaired and it's complete chaos. Now this is inside so I've got a kind of adapter for my ATX power supply and I've got an IDE interface here so I can have more things coming through the IDE port um, and this is your processor so this is the o 3 and this was a kind of standard Commodore processor that came with the O3O. Uh, it's missing an FPU, but you can add the FPU in later. It's quite a nice board. It doesn't get that hot. It's a quite nice design, and I've actually got a couple of these. I um, really like this board. It was a really interesting one. Now, this is the O4O, and this usually has a heatsink, but I'm currently taking the heatsink off to get a fan on it um, it's very hot basically it's a fast board um, this was also the standard Commodore 040 board that came with the Amiga 4000 so this is the bad boy of Amiga video cards this was the Picasso 4 and the special thing about this card is that you can do video switching so you could have the Amiga source AGA you could also have an RTG source switch between them and that would all be outputted from a little VGA's it did all the kind of switching 
and I'm going to do a video later with it actually running in the machine and this card is very expensive nowadays. This is Opal Vision which was a 24-bit editing card for graphics so you could you could have a Opal Paint which was you know TV quality paint and uh, you know you could have really high-end kind of videos and all that stuff. It was great and there was room for a roaster chip and I kind of can't remember what the roaster chip did but everybody wanted one back in the days and this was a, a kind of a good video card but it's hard to find converters and monitors that it will work with now whereas the Picasso will just work straight away with any kind of modern monitor through VGA. So this is the Mega 4000 running and I've updated it a lot I've added a new power supply in there to get it to run this state but um, I haven't got a hard drive in there yet so I need to kind of upgrade and I need to kind of add a few more pieces to get it fully going how I want it to be back to its kind of original state now this is still phenomenal years on just look at this kickstart I just turn it on now that's it it's absolutely crazy I'm gonna do Amiga Amiga control to reboot it and you'll see how fast it does it it's absolutely insane still still insane to me um, they're quite loud I'll put the mic next to the back so you could probably hear this is a uh, because Amiga 4000s have had a lot of heat uh, issues so the heat flow has got to kind of go through the machine and get exhausted out the back. I've seen lots of mods with big fans on the side back in the days, you know, when you had lots of Zorro cards and video toasters and stuff. But listen to this, this is the kind of sound. And that's with a modified new new fan in there. Maybe I could decrease it somehow. But anyway, I'm going to leave you now, guys, with um, Bart Simpson. Ooh, which game is this? Bart Simpson versus Bait. Space Mutants, so uh, you'll also be able to tell floppy loading times with this, so I'm just going to pop it in there, and straight away we pop up. So I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.